spending in excess of 15,000 US dollars per month on human growth hormone alone as of June 2021. Here's the rest of the email saying exactly what he's taking. So IGF-1 LR, taking it for around a year. This is otherwise known as an insulin growth factor, which is basically a hormone that helps to manage the effects of growth hormone. And it can ultimately help to promote bone and tissue growth. So next CJC with IMAP, which is otherwise known as imaparelin CJC, probably CJC1295, which is another peptide that helps secrete human growth hormone. And as he said, taken with IMAP and taking it for a year. And as I said, IMAP, imaparelin, which is essentially another peptide that's commonly taken with CJC1295. Next, I've been more than taking this for two months, again at the time of writing this email. This is commonly known as MK677, which is a non-peptide taken orally. It's a growth hormone secretagogue. Secretagogue is basically a fancy word for something that secretes something or helps to secrete something. In this case, it's gonna help to secrete growth hormone. And MK677 is also a ghrelin receptor. And ghrelin or ghrelin receptor may help with the likes of mediating metabolism. Next, Omnitrol, which is a human growth hormone, has been taking that for six weeks at the time of writing, four vials a week, and that's with 5.8 milligram vials. So 5.8 milligrams a week, some people know that in international units, that's around 17 international units per week. And that is more than many Olympia bodybuilders take. So a huge dose of human growth hormone. Next, test sip, taking 0.6 cc per week. So this is testosterone cypionate, which is an injectable, commonly known as testosterone. It's an anabolic androgenic steroid, commonly used for TRT, so testosterone replacement therapy. Some guys just take this to boost their hormone levels, and it's generally gonna be taken to increase muscle mass, increase, I suppose, the feeling of being a man for some people, but in most cases, people realistically just take it to build muscle. It's taken 0.66 cc a week. This is around 120 milligrams a week, and this can be considered actually a normal dose. Next, DECA, again, 0.6 cc per week. Been taking it for three weeks. DECA is known as nandrolone decanoate, another anabolic androgenic steroid, 120 milligrams per week, which again, isn't a huge amount. And he mentions in the email that he would be discontinuing this in two weeks, but who knows what the hell else he started to take from this point on, from that point onwards. Last one, Winstrol, 50 milligrams, otherwise known as Thanazolol, likely orally taken. Again, another anabolic androgenic steroid, actually becoming more scarcely available in many countries. He's taking 50 milligrams a day, as he just started this, been taking it for three weeks. 50 milligrams a day is quite a high dose, considered likely on the higher end, but not a hugely high dose for the likes of high level competitive bodybuilders. So guys, that's what the Liver King was taking as of June. 2021. Who knows what he went on since then? Probably a much more optimal cycle. I mean, you've seen the shape he's in now. Absolutely outrageous. Now, what do I think of this? I think that he is full of shit, but you can see from this email here, like his schedule is crazy. I mean, he does live by all these ancestral tenants, or at least it seems so that he talks about. And really the only thing that he's actually lying about all this time or at least this is what it seems from this email is that he takes performance enhancing drugs or that he doesn't take performance enhancing drugs which <laughs> is a big which is a big problem because he's promoting i mean living this ancestral life he's saying that you can do he's saying that you can be like him he's saying you can double your testosterone levels by doing all these things which i mean is bullshit i mean you can't, you can't do that 